Audiobook Academy. Book Summary. The Government Inspector. By Nikolai Gogol. To be more specific, Nikolai Gogol's 1835 farce The Government Inspector, which he wrote and performed on stage the following year, was not released to the public until 1842. There are a total of five acts in this comedy. The story takes place in Russia in the first part of the 19th century, and the central theme is the exchange of identities. An important person from the capital is due to arrive in a little village, but instead of the important person everyone thinks he is the important one. Laughter, tales, unexpected incidents, and misunderstandings are all the result of all the uncertainty. An old adage tells us that the mirror should not be reprimanded if our faces are unattractive. The author's goal was to present a mirror image of Russia's ugliness. A social and moral comedy, the government inspector riffs on Russian society and the human condition at the time. People's bad social traits and behaviors were found to be widespread by the author. Because of its complex plot and numerous twists, this novel is widely recognized and appreciated in the literary world. The show comprises five separate acts. To begin, we learn a little bit about the cast's backstory. Anna Andreevna, Maria Andreeva, Mary Antonovna and Amos Fyodorovich are the other members of the Antonovich family. Pyotr Ivanovich Dobkinsky and Pyotr Ivankovich Bobkinsky are just a few of the well-known names associated with the Russian Revolution. The governor, Anton Antonovich, has summoned them all to his home, where he has some bad news for them. Their village's government inspector is coming, and he'll be bringing a secret order, according to him. When he learned about the sensitive information from a buddy, everyone began to panic. Eventually, they just quit working altogether. They were informed by the governor that they must restore order to their workplaces. Zemlyanica is tasked with cleaning up after herself due to the general squalor of the area. Geese must be removed from the courtroom by Lyapkin Tiakin and Kuzmich has been instructed to thoroughly read other people's correspondence and report anything intriguing he discovers. Drunkenness, bribery, primitivism and other sinister aspects of the regime have been exposed. Dobkinsky and Bobkinsky, two country squires, entered the room. They say a government figure named Klestikov is staying in a nearby hotel room. Since he arrived from St. Petersburg two weeks ago, he has accrued debt and has given nothing back. They believed he was an official from the government. Nobody knew what to do, so everyone became nervous. The governor went to the hotel to swindle the inspector so that he might go forward in his career more quickly than he otherwise would have. Finale of Act 1 The governor's lovely wife Anna arrives and demands to hear everything about the inspector from the moment he arrives to the moment he appears. There is less intensity in the first act and it moves at a slower pace. In the second act, the story shifts to the purported inspector's residence. Klestikov and Ossip, his servant, are the focus of this act. Klestikov is a 23-year-old college student who is short, slender, and a little naive. Everyone considers him an airhead since he spends much of his time in his office doing nothing. At one point, Klistikov was on the way to meet up with his father when he got lost and spent all of his money on clothes and gambling before reaching the theater. Ossip, his servant, was forced to live with him in the country since he was broke. They were both starving, as they are unable to purchase food until they pay off their obligations. While Klistikov was convinced that he was about to be arrested, the governor entered his chamber, and he started talking about silly things. Thought that was a clever disguise by the governor. It didn't take Klestikov much thought to accept Anton's offer of a place to stay and some money. In the third act, we're in Anton's house, the governor. It's a joy for Anna and Mary, his wife and daughter, to welcome the guest. They're attracted to him because of the way he appears and how old he is. In order to persuade Klestikov that they are caring and friendly toward everyone, he was hauled throughout the orphanage by his captors. They then proceeded to the governor's mansion. As Klestikov's wife and daughter watched. He was engrossed in his performance to the point of distraction. His tales of friendships with actresses were shared with him. Everyone respected him because he boasted about how important he was. Klestikov continued to pretend to be the inspector in the fourth act. The local government officials showed up to make introductions to him. Klestikov was approached one by one by strangers who introduced themselves and offered to lend him money. Thrilled by what was transpiring. Klistikov wrote to a friend in Petersburg about the wicked village in which he was hiding. It was also his goal to seduce the governor's daughter and wife. Shortly thereafter, he was discovered kneeling in front of the governor's daughter, and as a result, he requested the governor marry Mary. All of the residents were looking forward to the weeding, which was scheduled to take place in the near future. A few days later, 
Klestikov arrived with his father, who had agreed to come help out. Meanwhile, on the opposite side, he and his servant are preparing to flee. Klestikov was afraid they would discover he was not who they thought he was and that he didn't have enough money. The governor's residence is filled with joy at the start of the fifth act. The governor viewed the move to the capital as an opportunity for advancement, and his wife was overjoyed at the prospect. Because the governor was confident in his own abilities, he threatened anyone who ventured to speak ill of him. When a large number of people came to Anton to express their congratulations on his daughter's engagement, Anton was taken aback by their outpouring of emotion. Klestikov's letters to his sister in Petersburg were included in a package that arrived in the mail. That Klestikov is not the inspector and that he staged the whole event is made clear. And they'd figured out what he'd been saying behind their backs, too. As soon as the real inspector came in town, a cop informed them that he wanted to meet them. After learning the truth, everyone was terrified. There are several main characters, including Anton Antonovich, Anna Andreevna, and Mary Antonovna, as well as Luka Lukich Klopov, Almas Fyodorovich Lyapkin Tiapkin, Artemy Filipovich Semlyanica, and many others. Characters Anton Antonovich, the governor. His authority is constrained because he lacked intelligence and formal education. In order to gain the inspector's favor, he did anything he could to steal other people's things and be a coward. He had forgotten how to exercise caution and was therefore duped. Klestikov, a 23-year-old Russian male. Everyone referred to him as an airhead since he was thin, unintelligent, and worked in an office. He spoke carelessly. When it came to fashion, he was always up to date with the current trends. His father's vacation was cut short because instead of spending time with him, he gambled and went shopping, which cost him everything he had. After running out of money and finding himself in the country, he was mistaken for an inspector. In spite of the fact that he was naive, he made the most of the situation. Russian realism has its start with Nikolai Vasilyevich Gogol. The date of his birth was March 31, 1809 in Ukraine, a part of Russia at the time. He left school at the age of 19 and relocated to Petersburg, Russia. He went through a number of job transitions and even tried his hand at acting before landing a position as a stand-in for the government. Nikolai wrote a high school poem at his own expense, but the audience didn't like it, so Gokul burned all of the copies and began thinking about migrating to the United States while he was working there. After a few years, he began teaching history at an all-girls boarding school while also working as a private tutor for wealthy students. He became well known in literary circles after publishing Evenings on a Farm near Dekonka, a collection of short stories. He was also close friends with Alexander Pushkin. The short story Terra's Bulba, which he later developed into a novel, was first published in 1835 in his collection Mirgarad, a collection of his short stories. Arabesques is the name of a new collection of short stories by him. Overcoat and the Nose are among the best known Petersburg stories from this time period. The government inspector was a huge hit for him in 1836. It's widely assumed that he acquired the idea for the novel Dead Souls from Pushkin. His likeness to Dante's Divine Comedy was depicted by Gogol. The first section of Dead Souls was completed in 1842, while the second and third portions were never completed. In the beginning, it was meant to be a nightmare. He worked on the second section for ten years before becoming a religious salad and going on a pilgrimage to the holy city of Jerusalem. The second portion of Dead Souls is thought to have been burned because he was influenced by a priest. In 1852, on March 4, he passes away. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this. See you in next video.